Uh, question number 25 to the Cabinet Member for Environment, Culture and Community Safety. I thank, uh, I thank Councillor Cooper for the, for the uh, question. Uh, it's, it is a curiously worded uh, question. Um, the second part of it, I would just like to assure members that uh, nothing that this council does is, uh, is, um, is motivated by concern for whether or not Councillor Cooper will find it exciting. Um, more seriously, the first part of the question, the feed-in tariff, we need to be absolutely clear uh, on uh, what happened and why. Uh, there was, uh, by the last Labour government, a uh, ludicrously unsustainable system put in place with uh, absurdly high uh, tariffs set from memory 43 pence per kilowatt hour, now down at 21. Um, of course there was a stampede of small businesses uh, and individuals rushing to take advantage of that. Um, it created an unsustainable bubble uh, that was popped by reality. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Um, and of course, I think we all feel for the collapse of small businesses, but we need to be absolutely clear how that came about. And if the Labour Party are looking for, um, for those who are responsible for that situation, they need look no further than a mirror. Um, turning to the Green Deal part of the question, um, I can absolutely reassure members that this council is at the forefront of all the discussions that are going on in London. Uh, it is a very complex uh, arrangement, um, particularly for inner London boroughs with older housing stock. There are lots of things that need to be carefully considered. There is no way that we're going to rush it. Uh, we're very much playing our part. Uh, there's a very full answer here uh, which uh, alludes to some of the issues. Um, and perhaps one of the biggest things that we as a borough will need to decide is what role we play in future, and we're talking about well into 2013, are we a promoter or are we a provider? Uh, and we need to be very careful about that. So we're not going to do what the Labour Party did uh, and rush things. We're going to do it properly and we're going to put in place a sustainable scheme. Councillor, Mrs Cooper. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, well, you probably won't be surprised uh, that I'm a bit disappointed by your answer. You seem to be saying that so far you haven't done anything at all um, and that a report will be coming forward in January. Could you um, please give some outline as to what has actually been going on? I, uh, I thank Councillor Cooper. No, that's not what I said at all. I thought I was pretty clear. There's a lot happening. We are as active as any borough in London. We are involved in all of the discussions that are going on at GLA level in terms of a framework. Uh, we very much back this deal. We are doing everything that it's realistic to be doing at this moment. Uh, there's a lot of detail in this answer. We will have a report to committee in January, and there is no way that we're going to rush things ahead uh, just to keep Councillor Cooper happy and end up with a mess. Um, there are 31 other boroughs in London, and we have got to work together. One of the big questions, and this just illustrates my point, is uh, what are the economies of scale that London boroughs can achieve by working together? Uh, we're not as big as Birmingham City Council, of course, uh, which has moved ahead and is probably the one, uh, the one uh, council in the country which is uh, blazing a trail. No London borough is in that position. So I think, uh, I think the council has misunderstood my response. Grimston. Thank you. Second uh, supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just uh, uh, perhaps uh, ask the cabinet member if he is aware that it's some four or five years now since Wandsworth uh, established the Green the Borough campaign. Uh, which was recently the recipient of a uh, significant national award, uh, demonstrating that far from waiting around to see how the, w the point at which the unsustainable feed-in tariff scheme of the previous government, which the cabinet members referred to, was going to fall apart, we were there taking a, a, a forward glance on, uh, and a forward move on environmental measures, uh, actually well in advance of a number of the other boroughs which are now moving on the Green Deal. Uh, well, I, I, thank, uh, I thank the councillor for, the, for that question. That's absolutely the case. Uh, there's a whole heap of evidence that uh, we've been at the forefront of uh, activities on, on, in this arena. Uh, as I say, we are very enthusiastic about this uh, and we've, we're fully engaged with, uh, with the process. I've spoken at a couple of, uh, uh, of public meetings and I spoke at a conference at which I was invited to speak um, in the QE2 conference centre a few months ago, at which I was able to make mention of this. Uh, and I, I didn't get the negative response uh, and the negative position that Councillor Cooper has adopted. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm perfectly happy that we are we're moving ahead. Councillor Mrs Strickland. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and I would um, particularly like to thank the Councillor for this question. Um, 
those that um, have managed to read the response um, to Councillor Boswell's uh, question to the leader will realise how advantageous um, this has uh, been. It's a case of um, inconsequential consequence, is that right? Um, nobody expected that it would perhaps um, work as well as it has, but what it has done is to give a really good firm foundation for the Bolingbroke Academy uh, within the family of the Wandsworth schools. All the heads have welcomed uh, the Bolingbroke head, and in particular the head at Burntwood, and together they have worked very well to deliver for the children. Supplementary. Councillor Mrs Strickland. I'd like to thank the Cabinet Member for that answer, and in the same context ask if she uh, thinks that the collaboration and innovation between local schools, sponsored schools, and the Council is demonstrated by the Government's approval of three new free schools in the borough, and the established schools' willingness, shown by the answer to question number 45, to grow their intake numbers to meet the multiplying need for primary places. Um, thank you, Councillor. Um, one of the uh, reasons for the success in Wandsworth, I think undoubtedly, is the way that the schools work together. Um, they are prepared to um, share expertise. If they have um, an area of difficulty, they're prepared to ask the other heads for it. And I do believe that by embracing the free schools and the academy schools, and all those schools that have already gone academy are, are staying within the family, um, the success of the schools will continue. Undoubtedly, um, the pressure on places, um, one has to negotiate with some of the primary schools, and bar a couple, all those negotiations have happened within a really very um, uh, convivial environment. Second supplement. Councillor Dawson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Will the Cabinet Member join me in thanking not only the Principal at Burntwood and the Council officers who have been instrumental in um, the, this first half term of um, Bolingbroke being at Burntwood, but also the inspirational head and staff of the Bolingbroke Academy, the very committed nature of the founding parents, and of course the delightful pupils that have settled in so well and have got the whole school off to a flying start. Um, I can't really add anything to that. Um, a group of us as councillors went to visit Burntwood School and we were um, taken, um, we hadn't expected to, but we were taken um, to inspect the Bolingbroke School at the same time and um, by the head of the Burntwood School. And it was um, indeed uh, wonderful to see. The school has got off to a particularly good start and the pupils were um, lively, receptive, pleased to see us, and very pleased with their accommodation, which is pretty outstanding at Burntwood at the moment. Councillor Mrs Cooper. Um, question number 27 to the Cabinet Member for Environment, Culture and Community Safety. I well, thank uh, Councillor Cooper for the question. Uh, well, the details are laid, laid out here in, um, in the written response. Um, we have five additional constables over establishment at the moment, um, with 31 PCs short. That, improvement, that uh, situation is improving all the time. It changes almost daily. Uh, we're now due to be uh, full establishment by March 2013, uh, and the bigger picture context for all of that is that uh, uh, across London there will be 2,000 uh, extra officers uh, being pushed out to neighbourhood policing teams uh, next year. Uh, so that's a very, very positive message. Um, rather different question, uh, and I know we will touch on this later, uh, is the restructure of the Community Safety Division, uh, and uh, the written answer sets out the, uh, the longer-term strategic thinking behind, uh, behind that, uh, that change. Uh, the two are very much uh, uh, sort of uh, planned together, discussed together. The borough commander has been involved at all stages of the two, and I'm completely satisfied that they are consistent insofar as they need to be, um, and uh, that is my very firm view. Councillor Mrs Cooper. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, thank you very much for this um, comprehensive answer, um, but I don't suppose you'd be surprised to hear that in some wards where there is uh, a very short staff situation that some local people are extremely concerned. For example, um, in the First Down Ward, where we are short a number of officers, there's been a great deal of concern expressed about um, lack of visible 
police on the street um, and there's been a series of muggings in one street at knife point um, and also people having their bicycles stolen from them. So um, I, no doubt you won't be surprised to hear that local people are extremely concerned um, to hear that there are low numbers of PCSOs in the teams locally. Furthermore, um, does he recall that it was stated when the low numbers were first found last March that the, uh, this was due to recruitment and that the teams were going to be fully established again with full establishment by June. Um, now this answer seems to be talking about aiming to have them at full establishment by March 2013. So would he agree it's unsatisfactory to have low numbers of police on the borough for a whole year? Uh, I thank the Councillor for the uh, supplementary question. Uh, well, yes, I do agree. Uh, and I very much uh, understand uh, the concern. Um, as I've explained before, uh, the reason for this shortfall is due to a uh, PCSO to PC uh, recruitment process run by the MPS. Uh, I've said privately and publicly that I don't think it was particularly well thought through because it left us with a very large gap. Uh, in absolute terms and percentage terms, one of the largest of any borough in London. Um, so, of course, I'm not pleased by that, and I'm very well aware of the, uh, the concerns that it, uh, uh, that it, uh, it leads to um, across the borough. Um, the borough commander is also acutely aware of that. He does have additional resources that he can move around. Uh, the SNT strength is only about 30% of his overall strength. So uh, he can be flexible and he can respond to those concerns. And certainly if, uh, if the councillor has uh, a specific uh, incident or series of incidents, it sounds like there might be something, then do please let me know, let him know, uh, and he, he will deal with that. Uh, in terms of timescales, um, well, it has slipped. That is also uh, very unsatisfactory, uh, and I keep, uh, I keep a very close eye on that. Councillor Randall. Um, would um, the Cabinet member um, like to tell us how he feels about what's happening in some safe neighbourhood teams in that many of the panels do not seem to be being consulted about changes in the makeup and the way that the teams are being supervised in particular. So uh, I would say that in Tooting um, constituency, Thursdown and Gravney wards are effectively amalgamated now, as are Wands, uh, Wandsworth Common and Earlsfield, uh, in that they have a single sergeant and they work together. But there doesn't seem to have been, certainly not from the the panels that I've been on, any consultation with the local people about how they feel about these changes and wouldn't that have been a better idea? Uh, I thank the councillor for, for the question. Yes, I'm aware of that concern and I've uh, communicated that to the borough commander uh, and I would encourage panels to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to do uh, exactly the same, the same thing. Um, but the situation is improving. I think it's very important to emphasize uh, that this is a temporary state of affairs. It is improving uh, day by day, week by week, and the longer term picture is very positive indeed because we will get back to full establishment and we will go beyond that. Uh, we will have our share of that 2,000 I mentioned, uh, and we will have a much stronger neighborhood policing uh, operation uh, by middle of next year, certainly. Councillor Mrs Graham. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can I ask question number 28 of the Chairman of Planning Applications Committee? Thank you, Mr Mayor, and I'd like to thank the Councillor for the question. I think whilst I think it was absolutely right for the Government to undertake reforms of the national planning system um, at the beginning of this Parliament, I do not accept the conclusions as laid out in the consultation uh, released in September that the permitted development rights that are currently enjoyed by residents need to be relaxed to improve the economy. Uh, I would say this about the permitted development system we currently have. It is uh, relatively cheap, it's relatively quick and painless and it protects the immunity whilst I think in many, many cases enhancing the value of our residents' uh, properties. Um, I, as I say, this is a consultation and we will be responding to this robustly uh, as set out in the answer on the paper. First supplementary question, Mrs. Graham. Councillor Mrs. Graham. Thank you. Would the Chairman agree that as an inner London borough with 45 conservation areas and literally thousands of small back gardens, we should be deeply concerned about the impact the government's proposals could have on our neighbourhoods 
from both unsightly and inappropriate extensions, overextended property, properties, and unnecessary unneighbourliness. I thank, thank the council, uh, council for the question. I, I think this is... Um, I think this is a kite being flown by the government, actually. Um, I, I suspect um, Humphrey, in, so, so Humphrey in Whitehall has a, a big pile of papers called Good Ideas for Ministers, and uh, every now and again he's called into the office of the minister and asked to uh, share some ideas about how we can refresh things. And this has probably been sitting on that pile of paper for some time, and it's probably come out once or twice in the last couple of decades. It's one of those kites that's been flown. I don't think it'll be flown very far. Councillor Randall. Thank you very much. Uh, I certainly hope that Mr Martin wouldn't get away with something similar in this council chamber then. Um, given th how uh, much your side likes to say we understand the views and the needs of our local residents, don't you think that you rather wish that the government had done a bit of pre-consultation information finding out to see how much people were clamouring for these extra permitted development rights? Because I, for one, never have received an email saying please give me more PD rights. I've had, in fact, the opposite, with people saying, oh, my God, how can this be done under permitted development? So don't you wish the government had rather asked you first as the planning authority? Well, in your effect, you're saying, Councillor, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, uh, a consultation before a consultation, because this is, this is a consultation, and you have the opportunity, Councillor, as we do as an authority, to respond and make that point, which is what we will make, that uh, we don't think this is a necessary step and it's the wrong framing. Um, the economy, yes, it does need to be uh, kick-started and we need to do all we can to improve the economy, but I don't think a, a relaxation of permitted development rights in this area is necessarily going to be the tonic. Councillor Fairbrother. Count, uh, question 29 to the Cabinet Member for Environment, Culture and Community Safety. Well, thank Councillor Fairbrother for the question. Um, delighted to uh, follow up on his, uh, his question from the last uh, council meeting uh, with uh, further details and confirmation of the arrangements, um, which I think everyone will find a, a very big improvement. Uh, no need to go down to libraries and then find that they're all gone. Uh, you can have them delivered uh, to your home address uh, by the council, which has got to be a very big improvement. So uh, I hope he's reassured by that. Councillor Fairbrother. Um, uh, thank you, the Cabinet Member, for the uh, answer. Um, I ask this question because um, I've had quite a few residents struggling with this new system. Um, they've said generally they don't find it very easy to order um, orange sacks through the online system. I've, I've tried it myself and I found on the first occasion it was very difficult because it sent you down a very long track um, and didn't get to the order form. Whereas the second time I did it I went a different route and it was quite easy. So I think that's why re some residents are struggling with it. Um, there is a bit of um, com confusion in the system. The website needs a bit more working on, I think, to get it right. Um, and secondly, um, this week suddenly a lot of the outstanding orders have suddenly been delivered. So that's welcome news. Um, but I, I, I think we've still, or rather, does the Cabinet member agree, we've still got to work a bit harder because a number of residents still think but they go down in the library and then the, the librarian rightly explains, I'm sorry, we don't stock these anymore. And they said, well, no one ever told us, but I know it was in Brightside, but I think we've got to just work a bit harder. Does the cabinet member agree? Thank the council for the, uh, for the, the supplementary question. Uh, well, yes, I mean, it does sound like we've got a little bit of extra work there to do. Um, but as, as it says in the answer, the website goes uh, fully live next Monday, 22nd of October, Sounds to me like there may have been a little bit of a sort of a premature confusion there. It's been live on Wandsworth High for some time. That, that works absolutely fine, and all the other details are there. Uh, but from next Monday, 22nd, the website will be fully operational, uh, and I'll keep an eye on it for him. Second supplementary. We haven't heard from Councillor Mrs Dunn yet. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, could I ask the Cabinet Member if he could offer me some reassurance that perhaps the staff in the libraries could help those residents who come to ask for orange bags, um, show them how to use the um, computers actually within in libraries and guide them through the ordering system for the orange bags. Um, but also the other thing I just want to be reminded of by the Cabinet Member is, is one of the reasons for changing the system, if you like, for orange bags um, is because of the misuse of them. 
And can you remind us how many, what percentage of orange bags in the past have been misused? Because I seem to remember that there were people delivering garden manure in our orange sacks, sort of far down the A3 corridor, and that this isn't actually what our orange sacks are for. I thank the councillor for, uh, for the question. Uh, well, the first, the first suggestion is a very good idea. Uh, I will, uh, I'll make sure that happens. Of course, uh, we want our library, uh, library staff to be as, uh, as helpful as possible. Um, now, from memory, uh, six million misused orange bags a year, which was costing us about £80,000. Um, going all over the place, the manure was being sold from a farm gate near Hastings. Uh, and it's only one of very many misuse uh, examples we know about. Uh, that has now been completely closed down. Uh, it's a very easy and obvious saving to have made. Um, so, yes, thank you very much for that reminder. That's why we've done it. Councillor Hallmark. Councillor, I thank Councillor Hallmark for the, uh, for the question. Yes, of course, I'm delighted to... Uh, uh, to uh, congratulate the, uh, the York Gardens team. They've done extremely well. Uh, I was just down there on Saturday at an event with, uh, with Mr. Mayor, uh, and it's very impressive the way the place has, has developed. Um, they still have some way to go uh, in terms of their fundraising target, but they have achieved a great deal. They are about 70% of the way there. Um, so it's enormously impressive. I'm delighted that they've, uh, they've got uh, the £5,000 from Lloyds Bank. I saw the jumbo check for myself. Um, and what I think is particularly pleasing about that is it's, it's an ongoing relationship. Um, Lloyds have already supported them. There have been um, members of staff from local Lloyds branches who've helped the, the library. So that really is a model for the sort of relationship one would hope to see. Uh, so very impressive and, and very, uh, very happy to acknowledge that. Uh, I'm sure the whole chamber will want to uh, congratulate York Garden stakeholders and thank Lloyds for their generous donation. What um, lessons does the cabinet member think have been learnt from this and how what might we encourage uh, other libraries in the borough to benefit from Lloyds? Well, I uh, thank, thank, uh, thank the councillor for that, um, that additional question. Um, I think the, probably the biggest lesson that we can all learn from it is that it is possible. Um, some people doubt that uh, volunteers can have a useful input into libraries. I think this, uh, this very much proves that the opposite is the case. Um, and I think there's, uh, there's a lot that uh, nascent uh, community groups, which are beginning to pop up in various libraries around the borough, can, can learn from the uh, York Gardens stakeholders. One of the things that strikes me in the number, the number of meetings I've attended at York Gardens is the diversity of the people who are involved. There are people from uh, a whole range of local schools, community groups, residents, users of the library. It's, um, it's, a, it's very impressive that it's such a diverse group and I think that's part of its strength. So, uh, so I think there's a lot that other people can learn from it and uh, I think we should be very proud of it. Councillor Speck. Yeah, um, as a member of the stakeholders group, I've seen how hard everybody does work there, and it is a very diverse group. Uh, and in fact, we've just had their annual report delivered, haven't we, to, to see how well they are doing. In the light of the success of the group, would the Cabinet member assure us that the long-term future of the York Gardens Library in the Community Centre is assured because of its a unique position uh, in the community uh, and that it doesn't just disappear because of the changes in the library service? Uh, well, I thank the Councillor for the, for the question. Uh, can I be very clear about the changes to the library service? They do not in any way uh, pose a threat to York Gardens Library, and I have just written to the Chair of the Stakeholders Group to make that absolutely clear. So if we can uh, uh, place that to one side. Um, but we also have to be absolutely clear that there was an agreement with the stakeholders, there is an income target, and as I mentioned, although uh, things are looking good, they're heading in the right direction, uh, there is still a shortfall. Uh, so when we do come to review the arrangement early next year, uh, we will have to take a view on that. So I can't give an absolute assurance, um, but I think uh, it's safe to say that the, the project is going well, and that, that should encourage everybody. Uh, but I can't give an absolute assurance. Well, the uh, time for questions has now elapsed.